You know when they say, when the work overlaps the pleasure, it's no longer work? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. <laughs> Welcome back to Budget vs. Baller, the series where we take two used mountain bikes and systematically upgrade them. One, my bike, gets the baller parts, and Henry's bike, well, it gets whatever we could find on the internet as cheap as possible. Now, today is all about drivetrains, and in my opinion, one of the biggest breakthroughs in mountain bike technology in the last decade has been the invention of one by drivetrains. Gone are the days of those two or three rings up on the front of your bike. Absolutely. I mean. I remember the skepticism I had when the first 1x11 system came out as I logged around with my 36 tooth chain ring and 36 tooth at the back, thinking a one-to-one -one ratio was enough. But not only do these systems basically give us more range, but they also give us loads and loads of chain security. I mean, lots of us don't even run chain devices anymore on our 1x setups. Henry, don't speak too soon. We've seen a lot of new drivetrains come out in the last decade, and a lot of them seem to offer trickle-down technology. How do you think yours is going to stack up? Well, I'm actually really curious for this one. I think from the outside, when you look at drivetrains, even comparing between brand to brand, there often seems to be something of an imitation game. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to see how much of that tech has trickled down to the cheapest drivetrain we could find. Because from the outside, it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. But what have you gone for? I'm guessing it's pretty pretty pricey. Well, Henry, as you can imagine, I've done this properly. Today, I'm going with SRAM's wireless GX axis drivetrain that is wireless electronic shifting. And to top it all off, I'm adding Cane Creek's E-Wings titanium cranks, the whole package, $2,200, actually just north of that. But you know what? The cassette's rainbow, so I think that helps. Well, I can imagine it does. Yeah, now the problem though with these larger cassettes can often be weight, obviously, as you add bigger cogs, you're adding more weight. And a lot of the times it's kind of funny, you're paying for almost what you don't get because the machining there, they're taking away as much metal as possible and that all costs money. Well, that's all very well and good. I mean, I imagine mine uses only the finest grade of pig iron. I mean, joking aside, I'm paying $90 for the drivetrain, which is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then $95, for the chain ring and cranks. So from, from the outlay, this is a really good value proposition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, your cranks say XT, but they're not the XT we might know. Honestly, I'm pretty sure, as long as it says XT, it's gonna be great. All right, well, Henry, you've got some internal cable routing to do. I've got some battery charging to do. Should we get into the install? Absolutely. So I was already actually using this cassette because of the free hub standard on this hub or wheel set. So this is going back on, uh, but now I can actually use all the gears on it, which will be nice. Before I couldn't use the biggest ring or the smallest. So full use, that'll be a treat. You get to run the same pedals now. I know, I think my performance is gonna go through the roof. They're just so... Like I'm used to running quite big pedals and yesterday I got my foot bounced and I went to the outside and normally it wouldn't be a problem but I've, I was like like that for a long time. Hmm. But they're fine, they're fine. Every, every bolt on this bike is slightly rounded, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Slightly rounded. I'm not surprised. Henry, question for you. Go on. Do we lose the chain guides? Yeah, why not? Because then, you know, we, we have narrow wide rings. We, pff, we don't need chain guides. Yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite attached to mine. But um, yeah, well, why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, we don't need the same. Okay, so what we're going to do, if I may. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? That's what I'm going to do. So this, basically, the interface of the SRAM actually goes to a smaller diameter. It's not 24 mil throughout. So you'll have your drive side, which is 24 mil, and your non-drive side, which I believe is 22 mil. Mm -hmm. But there is a spare drive side bottom bracket going around. So I'm going to take Jason's <laughs> and go drive side, drive side for 24 mil throughout. I love it. There we go. There 
There we go. Just like that. There we go. Ah, look at that. Proper tool for the job. Murky buckets. Look, yeah. it looks great. Mm. Perfect time to just clean it all out in there. Holy. See all that in there? It actually doesn't feel that bad. I think we got away with it. I told you I knew what I was doing. I've been to Hammertown before. So now we have a new bottom bracket from King Creek. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. It's gonna press right in there. You know what the best thing to fit headsets, bottom brackets? I know. Mm. That's not, oh, God. Another disclaimer time. This is not a how-to. This is just how we do. Yeah, <laughs> right. Oh my God, how big is this chain ring? Oh yeah, you're gonna need that. <laughs> Moment of truth. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm gonna put that other bearing cover on there. Oh, no, not quite. If we're being honest with one another, I often sometimes get my bike finished quicker than you. Mm -hmm. I'm here cutting apart a bottom bracket seal. <laughs> I've got to do some internal cable routing. Is this gonna be the day that you're waiting for me? I really hope so, because, you know, yeah, the internal cable routing is definitely going to take some time. But Henry, I'm not one to pump your tires, but you are, you were a mechanic by trade. I was once upon a time, yeah. I was, yeah. Uh, I've traded mechanics for stuff before, but I've definitely <laughs> never been paid to work on bikes. Oh, Agree some sweet interfaces. Mmm. Blue. Then they just go, they go on. Then they go. Oh yeah, got another turn out of that. Beautiful, matching pedals. Wow, luxury. There we go. So, taking all the folds up, all the cable ties, and now you should, he says confidently, kind of push more than you pull. Oh, it's got the, no, they've got the internal dampers, haven't they? God damn it, giant, no! <laughs> and this stuff's great, it keeps your bike quiet if you try and feed it through. I believe the phrase is not a happy bunny. In fact. All right, derailleur time. Let's do it. Say goodbye to the Mr. Cable. He will not be making a return. Oh, the sweet, sweet sound of zip ties coming off. by Mr. Shifter. And that is a dead shifter. Nice. Oh, beautiful. And look at that. That's all you need. That's literally it. It's so good. Oh, she's in. <laughs> All right, and then the derailleur. Man, you just put it on. There will be some fine tuning to do. All right, final touches. We're gonna put the pedals on before setting the derailleur up. Just, I find it a little bit easier to pedal. Now, hopefully that didn't snap. <laughs> a sticky link. Much like pairing the dropper earlier in the season, 
Just gonna turn on the shifter. Turn on the derailleur. Oh, the sound of shifting excellence. I can't get over the fact that your whole setup there is 200 bucks. Yeah. So like that, it. that's awesome. Yeah. Especially if you're coming from a bike, you know, maybe that like $500 hardtail and you just want a nice drivetrain. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know about those cranks, to be honest. <laughs> I'm, o I'm only going to chirp you a little because this is probably the only time in this whole series that I'll be done before Henry in terms of install. The shift is actually not that bad, except this uh, limit screw just keeps changing where it wants to be. Whoa. I'll just clean up because really I have nothing else to do at this point. This is why I always talk about cable routing because it makes your bike look like a nicer place to be. Your bike looks nicer for it. Yeah. And this bike looks far better. I mean, if it wasn't for this monstrosity. But yeah, pretty sure I've got to cut these cables short. Sorry, these cable ties. And she's good. Happy with that. That's done. It's done. Ready to go ride. As ready as it'll ever be. Yeah. All right. Well, you actually chose today's test track. I did, yeah. What, it's what, it's uphill? On. Yeah, so it's uphill, so it's a mix of kind of chunkier stuff. So it's not like, you know, you get some things that are technical single track and have lots of roots and little pads to climb up. This is quite a gradual gradient, but it's very loose, some baby head rocks, and it's basically a moto run that has been rutted out by big old motorbikes to get up it. So it's, um, it's doable, but you have to be on your game. Okay, so I mean, I'm guessing there's gonna be some shifting involved. There might be, yeah. Okay, well, let's take them out to the test track. I don't know if my equipment is gonna make up for my lack of skill on the climbs, but we'll see. So we've come here to a climbing trail just outside of Squamish. Yeah, honestly, I'd never come here. <laughs> yeah. Now, this trail is going to ask a lot of our drivetrains because it's not just about what has the easiest gear, but climbing a lot of times is about traction. Mm -hmm. It's about avoiding pedal strikes. Mm -hmm. So we've got something that's loose, that's lumpy and bumpy. Yeah. It's steep. It's not crazy steep. You know, you should be able to get up it, but it does actually demand a lot of our drivetrain because we also have to shift under load, mm. which isn't just a case of timing. It's also a case of you know, finding the right place and having enough grip to do so. So when it comes to the high-end, eye-wateringly expensive drivetrains, what kind of things are you looking for? Yeah, honestly, on a climb like this, you know, how well it performs under load, like you were saying, I am not a great climber, so I, I poorly time my shifts quite often, so hopefully it masks some of that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also the range, right? Like it's a huge cassette, and I wanna be able to, if I'm really huffing and puffing, spin in an easy enough gear, but also have the gear for coming back down the hill and being able to put the power down when I need. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that is totally true. I mean, I think that's the reasons that one, one by drive trains are a thing now, is because they have range in the cassette. It's actually, we've always been able to put one chain ring on the front, but the issue is before, you wouldn't have been able to get up the hills. Mm. Now, what I'm, I'm looking for, especially with this system, because it's sort of cheaper, I think the thing it needs to be able to do, it might not have the range, it might not have a lot of the high-end features, but it needs to be able to shift under load. Because if you're slipping or you're thinking that it's gonna, your chain's just gonna snap into two, it is a horrible feeling. And for me, actually, I mean, how much you might enjoy your climbs is a personal thing, but it will diminish the enjoyment of climbing for anyone. Yeah. Because it's almost quite a stressful experience thinking <gasps> you're living every shift like it could be a last. You know, a couple of years ago, or well, in fact, when the first SRAM did the first one by drivetrains, it was a 42 tooth out back. And I'm using a 42 tooth out back now. It doesn't feel very small. They were just built stronger back then. Jesus, it's not helped with a 36 tooth admittedly. But I remember I used to have a 34 42 and it was great. Yeah. I just got used to just spinning. Yeah, we're weaker now. And uh, like myself, the 52 in the back, granted I have a 32 in the front. Yeah. 
I love it. I, I find myself in there sometimes if I'm just casually spinning up mm. a steep hill because I don't need to get to the top that quickly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm right at home, honestly. All right, Henry, what a great ride. Yeah. Honestly, I'm really enjoying this bike now. Yeah, I mean, you spent a lot of money on it. Yeah, I just guess, a few thousand dollars. I mean, I guess there's the logic that even when polishing a turd, you're always gonna get dirty fingers. So I don't know if that stands up at all. But I mean, you have spent a lot of money. You have got what is becoming now a very decked out bike. Yes. The drivetrain, such an important piece. How did you get on? Uh, really well, honestly, yeah. We were climbing that steep fire road to begin with and then some single track stuff at the end. And honestly, flawless shifting, under power even. It was quick, responsive. There was no weird cracks or pops or anything like that. Yeah. How about you? And there were some cracks and pops, mainly from my knees. You know, it's hard, it's, it's, it's a tale of two halves. The shift is actually really good. However, I would worry about chain of tension. There's a lot of movement coming out of derailleur. Um, and we weren't riding anything even that rough, even that rough, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, I think with like a 30 tooth, it would be pretty good. Even a 32 tooth, a 36, my little old legs, it just wasn't cutting the mustard. I was finding it really hard getting up some of those hills. But for the money, it's outrageously good value. How much was your setup in total? Okay, so I'm looking at over $2,000, like 22, 2300, depending on what chain rings and stuff you get. Yeah not an insurmountable amount of money. You can get a bike for that. And how much, do you know how much roughly just the shifting components were? Just the shifting, so no crank set? Yes. Roughly 11 to $1,200. Again, there's some configuration I mean, that's there. That's a lot. Mine costs like, what, 95 bucks or something? 100 bucks? $95. I mean, you could just rip one off and it wouldn't even, you oh, well, only another 100 bucks compared to if you broke, you know, derailers do break. I know you've got some, Fancy auto correction, but it's in a vulnerable place. Let's talk derailleur shifter cassette chain. Sure. What are you going for? Because this isn't a drivetrain that's going to set the world light in terms of performance, but it does do an adequate job. And for that price per buck, it's very, very, very good. For the drivetrain, so not including the cranks, what are you going to choose? It is so very close in my mind because the price point there is so hard to ignore compared to the price point of mine. I mean, literally like 10 times the difference. However, I think I buy bike products sometimes to mask my own inability. And this drivetrain does that more than this one. And for that reason, I'm going to splash out on the $1,100, $1,200 drivetrain. It's just, it's just tokens. Who's counting them anyway? <laughs> my reasoning being, just like I said, performance, shifting under load and the range the range is the big one for me yeah i think if that one had a bit more range i would i would lean that way but um i just it's such a luxury to just go into those easier cogs and mm -hmm. spin away i never really try and set the fastest times uphill so that's where i find myself and so the other half of the drivetrain those gorgeous titanium cranks Ooh, they are gorgeous they are gorgeous so i believe yours were about a uh, hundred bucks for the yeah. package i think i'd go with those Interesting. I think I would go with those. I'd pair them with this drivetrain. I would probably get a smaller front chain ring, but even with that one and that bi this bigger range, yes. I think it would be more manageable. What about you? Honestly, I'd rather go, yes. I'd rather get, <sighs> set those cranks, take them from bike to bike. These ones, it might be naive of me, but I've never, you know, I've worked on lots of bikes from lots of different levels. Even like an entry level square tape bottom bracket. Mm -hmm gives me more confidence in these things. They just feel like they're thrown together. The, there isn't even that much thread engaged on those little pinch bolts, you know? Ah, what's the worst that could happen? And it just makes me <laughs> nervous. So for that reason, I'd probably splash. All right, Henry, you're splashing out on the cranks. I'm splashing out on the drivetrain. We have one more upgrade to make to these bikes. What is it? Um, no, I think I'm, I'm good, actually. I'm all set. Good, 
bike, it's done. I'm all full up, no more upgrades for me. Are you putting anything new on? Yeah, unfortunately we both got a set of brakes we got to slap on and that'll be next episode on Budget vs. Baller, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode.